If you need unlimited domination, clutch time, or anything else online or offline grind, and make sure you hit up Rose NBA on Twitter for quick, safe, and reliable grinding services. Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are doing a tier list of the best small forwards in NBA 2K23, my team. And I gotta say, small forward position is really, really stacked. Basically, every card in this list, with very few exceptions, are elite level cards in my team. There are a lot of really good small forwards in the game. Probably, maybe the strongest position in the game, at least arguably right now. So, definitely a very, very good position. And this is gonna be a tough tier list to do, because I gotta put some of these players in these lower tiers, and most of these guys are just elite level cards. But before we hop into the video, if you haven't Already, make sure you hit that subscribe button help me push towards the 8,000 subscriber mark on the channel I upload every single day multiple videos a day and I would really appreciate your support if you haven't already if you do subscribe without further ado let's hop right in and start off with Jimmy Butler who's going to go in the C or D tier I don't actually 100% know yet I gotta think about it but Jimmy wrong Jimmy come on there we go pick the starter Jimmy the Evo Jimmy he has two different Evos one is playmaking which boosts his speed and that is nice for sure his speed and his passing ability and things like that and he has super solid defensive badges obviously gets better playmaking badges and things like that like silver quick first step versus if you go with the shooting one you're not going to get those playmaking badges you're going to get a bunch of shooting badges as well and a 79 shot three so definitely going to be more capable in that area I probably would say the playmaking upgrade in all honesty with how easy shooting is this year is probably the better upgrade but it does limit his shooting a lot with 66 shot three and no shooting badges uh, he's not horrible and he is a capable enough defender, but his badges are definitely not elite. His release is interesting. It definitely looks really weird. He like leans back really far when he shoots, but it's honestly not a bad release. Movement wise though is not great. Ah, I don't know. I think he's one of the worst cards in this list to be completely honest. So I feel like I have to put him in the D tier. Sohan probably goes in the B tier. Uh, pretty dang solid card, but not quite to that elite level of some of the other guys in this list. Uh, 77 speed and excel is really good. A 73 shot three is okay. Uh, playmaking badges and defensive badges are where this card shines, but no quick first step is kind of annoying. No brick wall or glove as well, um, which are kind of some nice badges as well as anchor would be nice to have. But overall, he's a really, really good defender. He can knock down the open three. Release is actually quite good. If his release wasn't on slow, I don't know really why his release is on slow it's kind of annoying but if it was on normal it'd be amazing because honestly even on slow it's actually a pretty good release reminds me a lot of the trey burke base movement wise though is pretty awful i will say that uh no shooting badges hurts him a little bit even though the release like i said is quite good even on slow but he's he's a capable ish playmaker and a really good defender and i think he's a solid solid card with the ability to shoot the three as well as decent athleticism i do think he goes in the b tier iggy 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 do you go a tier or s i think you gotta go s tier i would be completely honest andre Godali is just an absolute beast in this game uh this card is so so good he's got good size six six with six level wingspan but he's got a massive player build definitely looks taller than six foot six he's got really great speed elite perimeter defensive ability knocks down threes and elite slasher as well with amazing defensive badges half limitless takeoff as well um can get a, a lot of his badges upgraded no limitless range to be added but overall he's an amazing amazing card and the fact of the matter is he's completely free so i hope you all took advantage and got this card this week when he was available because he's not available anymore and he has an elite god squad level player with a really smooth release as well uh, the mj dribble style is the best dribble style in the game arguably kobe escape is also really good overall he's just an incredible card and i do think he has to go in the s tier ak47 i feel like has to go in the a tier even though he is a very very good card um Andre is 6'9 with a 7 foot wingspan, which is elite size for a small forward. 84 speed and excel, super solid. 80 shot 3 is really good. The standing and driving dunk are a little low, but he dunks the ball solidly for me. And then defensively, he's absolutely elite. Hoff, challenger, clamps, and menace. Ton of good gold badges. Can get brick wall as well. You can add quick first step to him. Can add a couple shooting badges to him as well, but he's a pretty knockdown shooter. His release is basically base 29 from last year, which was the Danny Green or Danny Granger, Drew Holiday, uh, that type of release. If y'all remember that from 2K21, it's actually, or 2K22 and 2K21. It's quite a solid release for sure movement wise though is not great he is a three and d guy that is what this ak is on the court for but he is elite at both of those things especially the defensive part and that's enough for him to go a tier in my opinion same thing with bi going to also go a tier a solid card ten hoffs are amazing but he's got some really good some really decent shooting badges but also some badges that aren't that amazing to be completely honest hoff handles for days is nice but he's not a particularly great interior defender which is kind of annoying uh and i don't think he's an elite defender either i mean you can add all the badges you want to him but he needs a lot of badges bully limitless range a couple playmaking badges two like unpluckable and then you all would only have like two badge slots left for a defensive badge so he's going to be missing a lot of key badges which is kind of annoying doesn't have elite speed and defensively just isn't an elite offensively really good shooter with a good release mj dribble style and kobe escape are quite good pippen by in the back is okay nothing like it was in previous years but it's not bad the half handles for days is nice but he's just not quite enough of a defender in my personal opinion to be in that s tier with the top four or five guys so for me he goes a tier elgin is going to go b as well for a couple reasons the main reason elgin's 
this low is because he's only 6'5 and doesn't have an elite player build. Got three finishing badges. Really, Bully is the only key Hoff that he has. Shooting badges are all right, though. Doesn't get limitless range. Doesn't get handles for days. Doesn't get interceptor or brick wall or anchor. But he's a solid enough defender. He's got really good speed. He's a good shooter and a good slasher. Wish he was a little bit better on the defensive badge. And specifically, the release is fine. I like Brick Lopez base. I've liked it for years. I don't think it's incredible on normal, but I think it's solid. And the movement wise, pro dribble style isn't insane, but it's not horrible. And Kobe Escape is good. He's, he's solid. He's got really good stats. Badges are solid and the animations are solid as well. Nothing to write home about, but pretty good. Comes in in the B tier. Another guy who, ah, this is tough. Where do I put? Uh, I feel like I got to put Grant Hill in the C tier. I'm sorry. I just, he's a very, very good card, but he only has basically all bronze badges, which is super nice. And admittedly, you can upgrade all of his badges, which is super nice. You can add badges to him as well, even though as an amethyst, he can only get like three or four badges, but that means you could add a dead eye, or I'm sorry, a limitless range a bailout, a brick wall, an anchor, something like that if you wanted to. And you could upgrade his badges as well. You get a Grant Hill fully badged up, he is a completely different story, but that is crazy expensive to do right now. Really good speed though, acceptable shooter, really, really good defender, 90 driving dunk is really good. This card is honestly quite good when badged up, but if not badged up, he's very, very limited. Release, I do like the movement, I'm not a huge fan of, but going off of the card basically as a base card and assuming you don't have one fully badged, it's hard for a card with this many basically bronze badges to be elite despite the fact that the bronze badges he has are generally quite good i just think we got so many guys in this list it's hard for me to put him higher than c tier he, ah, i'm gonna go b tier for now but i might have to move him down to be completely honest because he is so complete even with bronze badges and if you upgrade just some of those he's gonna be a really really good card james worthy is easily s tier i think he's like the second or third best small forward in the game an exceptional card with elite size elite slashing really really good release as well and as a trophy case card he can get all the shooting badges which means you can add limitless range guard up something like that to him you can add handles for days you can add clamps interceptor uh defensively he's got 80 basically 85 on everything important except for steel and block and even that's above an 80 90 speed and excel is really good especially for a 6-9 player 83 shot 3 and a 90 driving dunk and then james worthy has an elite release as well john wall lower with al horford upper is really chicken so much better than the release james worthy's had the last couple of years which has been like the where he releases it from his chest like almost a chest pass versus this year where it is absolutely smooth chick easy to green one of the better releases in the game honestly he's an elite level card and an easy s tier for me Another easy S tier is going to be Jason Tatum, another guy who just isn't, I mean, he's very, very good at his position. Um, very, very complete statistically. Steal and blocker a little low, but the defensive stats besides that are quite good. He's got good speed, good dunking, good shooting. Um, just overall really, really good. Five Hall of Fame badges and uh, three of them post drivers catch and shoot our guard up are quite good. Can't get limitless range. That's the one badge and brick wall kind of as well as anchor. I wish he could get those three badges, but they're not crucial. Same thing with Bully. Like, I, I can live without those. You can upgrade his quick first step. Defensively, he's super solid. He's He's got an elite release. Tatum's release this year, again, just like James Worthy, is so much better than it was last year. And movement-wise, the curry behind the back is great. Pro dribble style and escape aren't terrible either. He's a very, very good all-around card, though, just an elite level small forward in that, it just it, as an all-around player, and he comes in in the S tier. Kawhi is going to go C tier pretty easily for me. I don't think he's as bad as the guys I'm putting D tier, and I don't think he's good enough to be in the B tier uh, quite well, I wouldn't say quite slow, but he's a bit slow. Uh, Badge-wise, is not great. Defensively, though, he's quite good, and he's got a solid release uh, with the ability to shoot the ball. He's a 3 and D guy. He's not an elite 3 and D guy, but he's a 3 and D guy regardless. Gets the job done. Comes in in the C tier. Lamar Odom. This is a tough one for me. I don't exactly know where to put Lamar Odom, to be completely honest. I feel like it's between A or B tier. I would... I feel like I'd take him over all the guys in B tier, but I still... I don't know, man. This is a tough one for me. I think I'm going to have to go A tier for now, although I may move him down as well, potentially. Uh, he is a very solid card. I mean, he's another guy who's pretty good all the way around. He's got good speed, good shooting, good dunking, and good all-around defense. Badge-wise, not as many gold badges as I'd like, but some good silver badges and the ability to get some solid other badges as well. Like his quick first step can be upgraded. He can get guard up. He can get post-lockdown defensively with ankle braces as well. Release is honestly very, very good on current gen. On next gen, I wouldn't say it's elite, but it's not bad. Uh, he's good. He's quite good. Movement-wise, isn't amazing, but I do think he's a very solid card, and I think he definitely deserves to be at the end of A tier, probably. Another guy who's going to go A tier is going to be Larry Johnson. Ah, okay, that's a tough one. Does Larry Johnson go S tier? I think Larry Johnson's got to go S tier. I'm sorry. I was going to put him in A tier, but he's just too good. He's got to go S tier. 6-7 uh, with a 6-10 wing span isn't insane size, but he's got a really good player build, especially a really wide player build. Hoff, Bully, and Fast Twitch and Post Rise are all really good badges. Hoff, Pogo Stick as well is super nice, and he can get any badge, which means you can add Limitless Range, Guard Up, Handles for Days, Clamps, 
glove. You can add badges to him that make him absolutely elite. Really across the board, able to shoot from deep. He's got a chicken release. It's super easy to green. 85 plus on nearly every important stat as well. Like I said, release is really good. Movement isn't insane, but I mean, pro dribble style isn't insane, but the Kobe escape and step behind the back are really, really good animations. I'm running this card as my starting power forward right now in my god squad. I think he's elite at small forward or power forward. Half bully is such a nice badge to have as well. He comes in an S tier for me. LeBron is going to go into the C tier. Um just not an elite card at this point badge wise especially statistically isn't incredible it isn't terrible steel and block are pretty low but the perimeter defensive stats are okay interior defense is pretty all right as well speed and excel are meh shooting is meh dunking is really really good the problem is all these silver and bronze badges the baddest he can't get as well like limitless range quick first step clamps glove badges like that he's just not complete on the badge and release i do like bronze release a lot this year in terms of his sigs i don't love them i do think lebron is a pretty good card though and i think he's going to continue to be a really really good card in my team always plays better than his stats and badges say but this at this point he's just not good enough in that area to be higher than the c tier Paul Pierce is another kind of tough one to me. I feel like he's in between that A and B tier. I like this card. I don't love this card is what I would say about Paul Pierce. I think he's pretty darn good. He comes in at 6'7 with a 6'10 wingspan, 83 speed and excel, really good shooter, good perimeter defender, good dunker, acceptable-ish on the interior with a 74 interior, but that's not amazing. Unfortunately, doesn't get clamps, glove, or interceptor, which is pretty annoying. You can add quick first step to him, but no range either, uh, no bully. So there's a few badges he's missing that are pretty crucial badges. Release is really smooth, though, and he's a knockdown shooter with half catch and shoot, which is super nice uh trey young dribble style is okay kobe escape is good trey i'm behind the back not very good um so ah i'm gonna go b tier i'm sorry i, I like kevin love a lot i mean not kevin love i like paul pierce a lot but i don't think he quite to the level of the guys in the a tier right now so for me he goes down in the b tier paul silas is a pretty easy um a d tier in my opinion he's not super fast he can't shoot the ball and his badges are all bronze badges basically i know he's got every badge on defense at least on bronze but it just doesn't do enough for me. I'm sorry. He's missing. He can't shoot the ball barely at all. I mean, 57-3, you could green wide open occasionally, but it's going to be tough even with how easy shooting is this year to green. Uh, and he's not fast either. I mean, he's got acceptable size, but Paul Silas was a monster. His uh, diamond card last year. And if he gets another diamond card this year, it's probably going to be quite good, especially if he gets an early game. But for me, he still goes into the D tier. Um, 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 Robert Ori. I have not really looked at this card much, but I've heard awesome things about him. So we're going to put him in A tier and then we might move him on from there. 78 speed and excel isn't amazing. Uh, the defensive stats on the interior or steel and block aren't amazing, but the 80 interior perimeter and lateral quickness is nice. 610 is elite size. He's a knockdown shooter and a solid dunker with really good shooting badges. Doesn't get limitless range though. No clamps, no glove, and no interceptor. Yeah, not an A tier guy. He's a B tier guy. I'm going to actually move uh, Grant Hill down to C tier as well to the top of C tier, but still. Uh, this Robert Ori looks good though, and I know release is absolutely chicken he's got a really really good release movement wise is not particularly good though so he's he's pretty good though i think for, for a budget card especially robert ori is definitely a really good card just not quite good enough to be higher than the b tier um and the next card on this list is rudy gay i almost forgot who we had on the list but rudy gay problem with him is he only has a 67 shot three the good thing about rudy gay is his release is exceptional um he almost has no badges and his defensive stats are not good but his release is so good his player build is so good and his dunk game animations are so good i almost don't care i mean i'm going to still put him in the d tier just because he has no badges at all but rudy gay is amazing in 2k every year this rudy gay way plays way way better than a sapphire with no badges and super mediocre stats when rudy gay gets a better card trust me will be one of the best cards in the game as it always is every single 2k he's always a beast and this year looks to be no different scotty barnes i feel like is on the exact same level as grant hill to be completely honest and even lebron guys like that where he is that c tier guy statistically he's just a glue guy he's an all-around guy got great speed or solid speed i should say solid shooting ability solid all-around defense solid slashing solid badges but nothing that jumps off the page at you no limitless range no interceptor no brick wall uh he does have silver bully which is nice but no limitless takeoff or posterizer he's just missing a decent amount of badges his release is mediocre it's not amazing uh movement wise is pretty good but it's pro size of escape isn't amazing but mj dribble style steph behind the back are both great i think he's a very very solid card i just don't think statistically or badge wise or release wise he's quite to that really nice level that would put him in the top two or top three tiers i should say scotty pippen is the best small forward in the game i don't even really think i need to explain this that much to be completely honest 89 speed and excel 81 shot 3 95 driving dunk unbelievable perimeter defensive stats uh defensive badges as well are insane he can get every badge in the game so you can add brick wall anchor handles for days limitless range um things like that if you want to you can upgrade all of his silver and bronze badges to gold his release is basically trey burke based from last year is what i describe it as which is like that t-mac release which is so so much better than his release has been in previous years he is so good this year this pippin card is absolutely incredible even though his sigs aren't insane 
Jacoby Sizemore is good, but his other stakes aren't amazing. He is an absolute monster and easy. I mean, an absolute insta S tier for me personally. Uh, and then the last two guys, we're going to go D tier for both of them, Tony Kukoc and Xavier McDaniel. Tony Kukoc is just too mid all the way around, very similarly to Rudy Gay. Uh, Badge-wise, it's not great. Very mid defense, not super fast. An acceptable shooter. He's got a good release, but he's just not good enough on paper to go any higher than D tier. And then X-Man, similar story for X-Man. Statistically, definitely better, which is nice. Defensive badges are pretty good. Uh, shooting is pretty low, though, 64 with no shooting badges. You can green wide open to him with him. But, I mean, he gives you a solid amount of defense and a little bit of athleticism. I think he's probably... We'll put uh, X-Men in, in C tier. I think he's better than all the guys in D tier, but he cannot go any higher than C tier at this point. So this is going to be my tier list for this video. Hopefully y'all did enjoy the video and let me know what you think of my rankings in the comment section down below, who I may be ranked too high, too low, or potentially left off the list that you'd like to hear my input on. So hopefully y'all did enjoy the video and uh, yeah, I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. And I appreciate y'all. Peace.